Hi friends, I am here to read you chapters 22 and 23 from Escape from Mr. Limoncello's Library. <laughs> um, oh man, that was so dumb. Haley could not believe how idiotic she had been. Trying to crawl out of a book return slot? Yeah, like that was going to work. She was giving herself a good talking to as she trudged up the steps to the first floor. When she entered the rotunda, she saw Charles Chiltington slipping out into the lobby again. Chiltington was a snake. Worse, a garden slug. Maybe a leech, something oily and slimy that left a greasy trail and liked to mooch off other people's ideas. That was why Chiltington had tailed, up, had tailed the twin library nerds, Peckelman and Fernandez, upstairs during last night's desert, dessert hunt. Haley was smart enough to know that Chiltington was hoping to steal the book geek's ideas. Actually, Haley was a lot smarter than anybody, except for her teachers and whoever scored her IQ tests knew. With certain people, mainly grown-ups and silly boys, pretending to be a ditzy princess made getting what she wanted a whole lot easier. And what her dad wa and what she wanted right now was money, lots of money. Her dad had been out of work for nearly a year. They'd run into all their they'd ran through run through all of their rainy day savings. They had had to borrow from relatives and in-laws. If Haley could win this competition and become Mr. Lemoncello's spokesmodel, her family money woes would be over, and they would and she wouldn't have to sell her home. And once they and once other people saw her on TV for Lemoncello games, they'd want her for their commercials too, and movies, maybe her own sitcom, something on the Disney Channel. But for all that to happen, Haley needed a winning idea and fast. Something better than a crawl through the slot that's barely wide enough for your wrist. Maybe she should flush herself down the toilet and escape through the sewers like Charles did in that video game. She headed over to the Book Nook Cafe so that she could sit down and think. She stepped into the room and checked out the snack table. There were trays of cookies and strawberries and bananas and brownies. And sitting down to nibble on a macaroon, she studied the row of cookbooks displayed on the bookshelves lining the wall. One in particular caught her eye. Cupcakes, cookies, and pie. Oh, my! Because the cover looked extremely familiar, two googly-eyed sheep made out of chocolate frosted cakes with gobs of mini marshmallows for fleece. Um, Haley had seen that cover before. In the lobby! It was in that glass case of memorable reads selected by the library staff. She went over to the shelf and picked up the book. She went, when she opened the cover, to, she discovered two cards. One was a four by four piece of a white cardboard with the black silhouette of a sheep on it. That. The second was a card about the same size as a community chest in Monopoly. Haley sniffed the card. It smelled like lemons. She grinned. For Mr. Lemoncello. On one side of the yellow card was printed Super Duper Bonus Clue. On the other clue, on the other was the clue. Your marvelous memory has earned you even more memories. Proceed to the Lemoncello Abelia Room. Look for item number 12. Haley slid both cards into the back pocket of her jeans. She pulled out her library floor plan and found the Lemoncello Abelia Room. It was on the third floor. Making certain that nobody, i.e. Charles Chiltington, was following her, Haley quietly dashed up the spiral staircase to the second floor. Checking for Chiltington one more time, she tiptoed tip up to the third floor where she found the room labeled Lemoncello Abelia, mini museum of personally interesting and somewhat quirky junk. Haley opened the door and stepped inside. The front room was like a storage warehouse. Cardboard boxes were stacked on top of wooden crates, sitting on plastic bins stuffed with papers. All the boxes, bins, and crates were numbered. She saw one labeled five, num number 576. Guess Mr. Lemoncello really never throws anything away, Haley remarked as she scanned the heaps looking for the number 12 mentioned on her bonus card. Weaving her way through the stacks and the columns, Haley finally found her super duper bonus. Item number 12 was an old boot box from the Alexandriaville shoe store that Haley had never heard of. Someone had taped a label on the lid, paraphernalia, accoutrement, and doodads from Mr. Lemoncello's 12th year. Haley lifted the lid. The box was filled with all sorts of confusing knickknacks, hand whittled prototypes for game pieces, a star spangled red, white, and blue HHH Humphrey button, a battered clasp envelope sealed up with tons of tape, 
Someone had scribbled first and worst idea ever on the front of the envelope with a magic marker. There were also felt a felt pen, there was also a felt pennant from Disneyland and rubber banded stack of cartoony cards from something called Wacky Packages. The card on top was Weeks, Weekies, Breakfast of Chumps. Haley knew that this memory box had to be an important clue. Why? She had absolutely no idea. Chapter 23. Kyle flipped over his lemon-scented super-duper bonus card and read what was written on the other side. You will find the ultimate version of this board game on the second floor balcony circling the rotunda. Huh? said Akimi. What's that mean? I don't know. Let's roll out the paper and see. Akimi and Sierra helped Kyle anchor the edges of the scroll on the tiled floor. Okay, said Kyle. It looks like the early sketch for a board game. See the circle in the center of the other circle? That's probably where you place the spinner that you move your pieces around the ten rooms. He stopped. Wait a second. What, said Akimi. Do you recognize the game? asked Sierra. Yep, said Kyle. I played it this week with my brother Curtis. It's Mr. Lemoncello's bewilderingly baffling bibliomania, and it takes place in a make-believe library. What about finding the ultimate version up on the second floor balcony, asked Sierra. Kyle grinned. You'll see. Coming up from the basement, Kyle saw Andrew Peckelman in the middle of the round rotunda reading room, opening a long metal box sitting on top of his center desk. The holographic image of Mr. Tobin was there, of Mrs. Tobin was there, smiling patiently as Peckelman pulled some kind of magazine out of the box. Miguel was almost also near the librarian's desk, apparently waiting his turn for a consultation. That's the box we saw drop the robot pluck off the shelf, whispered Akimi. Kyle nodded. He motioned for the others to follow him and slipped around the circumference, circumference of the rotunda. Akimi and Sierra slunk after him. In the shadows on the far side of the room, they saw Haley Daly heading for the staircase they'd just come up, steps that would take her back to the basement. Kyle wondered if she found something else to crawl through. If so, he hoped that it was bigger than a mailbox. Is this the real magazine? He heard Peckelman shout out in the ho Oh, is this the real magazine? He heard Peckelman shout at the hologram. Yes, Andrew. This concludes your, li your librarian consultation. Next, how may I help you, Miguel? Not so fast, snapped Andrew. I'm not done. Um, your consultation just concluded, said Miguel. Says who? The librarian? Miguel, said the, oh, Miguel, said the hologram of Mrs. Tobin. What is your question? Sorry, bro, I told you so. She's just like Mr. Younghands at, like Mrs. Younghands at school, snapped Peckelman. All the librarians like you better than me. Yo, ease up. You'll see, Mrs. Tobin, you will all see. I'm going to beat Miguel Fernandez big time. And when I win, I'm going to tell Mr. Lemoncello to fire you. She's a hologram, said Miguel with a laugh. You can't fire someone who doesn't actually exist. Well, then I'll tell Mr. Lemoncello to pull her plug. Puckelman grabbed his magazine and stormed out of the rotunda into the library. I guess Andrew's planning on doing something with the front door, Kyle whispered to Akimi. Well, that's totally dumb. They already told us that wasn't the way, the way out isn't the way we came in. Maybe Andrew doesn't think that Dr. Zenchenko was telling us the truth, suggested Sierra. Come on, said Kyle, leading his team toward the closest, the closet, the closest staircase up to the second floor. Glancing over his shoulder, he watched Miguel place a slip of paper on the table in front of the semi-translucent librarian. This item has been temporarily removed from the stacks, Miguel, said Mrs. Tobin. You will find it in the display case next to the original Winkle and Grimble scale model. Let me give you that location. There was a grinding sound like, one of, like when movie tickets shoot up through the slot at the box office. Miguel snatched the small square piece square of paper that popped up from the librarian's desk and spun around. He froze the instant he saw Kyle, Akimi, and Sierra sneaking around the room behind him. We'll find out what happens next.